We spend so much of our lives behind these panes of glass, constantly keeping a barrier between ourselves and everyone else. And whether that's because we like pretending they're a movie screen where we can watch everything unfold, see fairy tale endings where it all turns out all right, or because we just like keeping a wall between reality and what we want to believe is one of those questions I don't know if I'll ever be ready to ask. What I do know is that the static sound air can make buzzing past my ear at 60 miles per hour is just the best thing I've found to stop myself from thinking about you on these long drives. Guess I'm just rolling around Like distance is a home to be found Big dreams and second guesses Pictures of you in sundresses to promote the tour and it actually sparked a little collaborative project with me and Donnie called Well Your Pen. I tried making you a valentine. I accidentally used too much glue. So I hope you don't mind just taking my hand because I got a heart stuck there for you. What's your worst fear about this tour? Getting lost. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm kind of a germaphobe so I'm trying not to get sick. I turned it off. I've been on tour for about two weeks. Uh, so this is our send-off show. This is where you wave goodbye to us. We always know that we have a cool place to come back to. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming out. Really appreciate that. And uh, Kevin will uh, start it off. Who are you talking to? Are your uh, girlfriend? No, it's not my girlfriend. No, oh, okay. Right. Is it your mom? Uh, what time are you going on? Um, what time is this over? Midnight. Oh, oh. Two hour drive to Raleigh? Hour and a half. Okay. Oh. Well, actually from here it might be more like two hours. This is gonna be this is gonna be I need to get drunk. <laughs> night. Let's finish up our uh, our sets at uh, the beautiful turntable in Jamestown. Really nothing else like it in the in the whole world. So if you ever get the, the chance to come here, um, you definitely should take that opportunity. Awesome artwork. Um, and they got you gotta right see this there. TV. The, name. the Empire Strikes Back lunchbox guitar because well, let's be real. I don't know if it gets any better. On air, they usually do live streams. And I'm, I'm glad I found it. It's one of those <coughs> gems. Well, we, cool. we feel blessed to have uh, uh, been able to book a show at, at a place like this. Because it's different. It's so different than any other menu I've been to. And when John and I start dating, I like to go to concerts always, and I love music. But John was kind of on the obsessive side in a good way. So like I met him and he was like, okay, so I have a ticket for Wednesday to this show, Thursday to this show, Friday to this show, and he had tickets like up for like three months, and it was like three or four times a week. That's when the paycheck went. It was going to open mics for free or anything I could go to for free, but there's so many different venues within yeah. that area. But the whole atmosphere, as far as coffee houses, the record store, the idea of the intimate venue, whether it was 500, 800, or 50. Yeah, you know, like ours. Or <laughs> and just dorks, but anyway. He suits up before it. Yeah. Yeah, suits up. Like, yeah. <laughs> we, get, we get a There's a, we're, we're part of a protest. Yeah. Are we going in? What's the verdict? <laughs> Are we going in? Donnie's game, Kevin? Sure. On the road again. Low popper coffee tonight. Ooh. Stay with my cousin Denise in downtown Richmond. Tour life. Hashtag MSTD. Let me try that again. 
Hashtag M. Oh Tag ta- <laughs> Let me do it. Let me do it. Hashtag GSDT. Hashtag GSDT. Yeah, I'm a little out of it. Got a big headache. A lot out of it. Yeah, I'm a lot out of it. It's okay. Anyway, on the road again. Johnny, why do you like to read the paper every city we're in? What show are you most excited about, Kevin? Fort Wayne. Because it's a uh, record store. I love going to any of them that I can. And uh, to play in one, it's going to be sweet. What's up? Oh. How goes it? Good, this how are you? my cousin Denise. We're making a documentary. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, nice enough to let us stay at, uh, stay at her place, crash on the floor. If you don't mind, though, I do get up at 4.40. Uh-huh. So I'll just, like, leave. Yeah. I'll try not to make noise. Yeah, Just finished up uh, our set at Glow Pop of Coffee. If you're ever in Richmond, check it out. It's a really cool place. It's not like like a mom and pop place. It's like a you know, a place like a city city kid would go and uh but they're friendly as hell. I've got a very good opinion of Richmond. My cousin lives out in uh what's it called? Show Shoko? Show Shockow. Shockow. I don't know. Shockow. Awesome part of the city. Uh seems like really artsy and like really really nice. Some of the fun. Uh, <clears throat> some sort of illness, probably related to allergies, I think it's developed some sort of infection. So we're gonna have to find a minute clinic. We are on the way to Washington, D.C. It would seem that way. I woke up this morning and I was not feeling good. I was a little bit worried. Uh, like last night, you were, you were pretty rough. I went to the doctor, <coughs> uh, I went to the pharmacist, and she gave me some medication for my allergies. Done? Thoughts, aspirations, goals, and thoughts, thoughts, college majors. What? College majors? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm excited for the show. I'm trying to take it one show at a time. Now, let me ask you a question. Where are we playing? St. Elmo's. Did he paint naked pictures of himself? Like, yeah. Is that hilarious and awesome? Totally. <laughs> I mean, like, I wish I had the guts to do that. So, this is where I sit. Um, well, me and Kevin kind of alternate uh, whether we're driving or shotgun, and then the shotgun person usually helps navigate, although I don't do a terribly good job. But Donnie, why don't you take our friends back and show them? Yeah. If Donnie runs yeah. backseat. Here comes the backseat. So, uh, so we got all the stuff. Our snacky snacks. I'm coming up here. My right dear's where I sit. Got some, some Sherlock Holmes in the house. I'm doing a little reading. Yeah, let's get real. Donnie, when was the last time you cried? <laughs> okay, we could talk about like last night, like there wasn't that many people there. There's some people there last night. Just because it's one person in the crowd doesn't mean that that doesn't mean anything, you know? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter to me if there's 40 people or 4 people, as long as those people are invested in yeah. what I'm saying and what I'm doing and give me like the attention and allow me the chance to like present myself my work, that's what really matters, because I think that's where the connection happens. You can have a roof full of 40 people, maybe only 10 of them will be paying attention. Is it safe to say I wonder where you are? While I strung these same four chords on the S guitar. Just say I don't miss you 
I really liked the, sh the coffee shop or the venue. The coffee shop was good. What I enjoyed about it is it feels like, it felt like a very community coffee shop. It seemed like they had a lot of regulars yeah, coming yeah, yeah. in. That's what I mean. Like, it seemed, if there is such a thing as a shitty part of Alexandria, I guess this would be it. In the midst of that, there is this little coffee shop where people would, would just, like, come from, like, all different walks of life. And then there was Arthur. Or we walked in. And he was just like, you know, smile and wave, and he's like, hey. And we're like, oh, what's up? And then we start playing, and he just lights up. He's he was like, just so excited to see us. He kept he, saying, Buddy Holly, yeah, Elvis, he kept, he kept, the Beatles. After each song, he would go, hot dog. He was just like a genuine soul. Like, yeah. he was just there to hear music, like, real music, and he was there to just, like, soak in it. Yeah. And, like, that's what I want out of, the like, an audience. <laughs> Philadelphia. Philly is uh, where my Aunt Sue and my cousin Joey live. Um, when you're in, as independent and as uh, uh, independent as, as we are, you don't necessarily have money for hotels. If you're as timid and scared as I am, you don't really want to sleep in your car. <laughs> uh, your only option uh, to tour is kind of to stay with people you know, which uh, actually is really cool. My cousin Jimmy, who I really never hung out with, we stayed with him in Maryland, and he came out to the show last night with his wife, and uh, it was really cool getting up with him and uh, you know talking to him about our family and like how we're doing. And he was asking me about touring and about my music and stuff, and like it was really cool to get to know him. It's kind of a family reunion tour for me, a little bit. Right, tonight's our uh, off night. We've been kind of going 100 miles an hour uh, the last couple of days, so it'll be cool to have like a night where we're just kind of chilling and getting our stuff together and figuring everything out, looking back on the tour, see what we can do better. I don't know, I'm excited for Philly, never been to Philly. So it'll be interesting to see what's going on there. I'm really glad that we kind of planned this out to like have a good pace to it. Because after Philly, we drive five hours to Pittsburgh. And then after that, we drive, the next day, we drive five hours to Fort Wayne. The things you take for granted when you're on tour are written by fountain pen. So, beds, mattresses, my girlfriend, home-cooked meals, time, the ability to take naps. <laughs> there you have it. Familiarity. Why am I a poet? I was never much good at anything else. Born, you didn't come out of the womb like... Spitting verses. Yeah. Spitting verses. My, my brother, who I really I respect him a lot, he's, he's a photographer and a dancer. And, uh, who told me once that there would be there would be a line that I would cross and that I would know when I crossed it. It's when you start sacrificing other things for your art or for whatever you love really. Whatever. That I was putting other things in the background, be it like other schoolwork, be it family, be it like relationships or love life or sex or whatever it was, like all that was taking a back seat to writing. And I was like, oh shit, I gotta write this poem or else like can't eat breakfast before, it was just like, gradually, like, little, little lines would start nagging at, at, at the back of my mind. For poetry is always discovery. Like, what made me realize I was a poet is that I hated myself. I was very dissatisfied with who I was. Performing would allow me to create this persona, this person that I could be, that wouldn't have to be Donnie Welch. Like, you can't be a performance po poet with a persona. That transition from the persona to the person has been difficult. Being able to be up there in front of people is when I really most feel like myself and interacting with society. Meeting some girl and putting on a flirty tone or talking to your parents and putting on the respectful tone. Like it's all these various acts to you that you go yeah. through. But really the stage the stage and the performance is when I feel most comfortable in my own skin. Is there a way to make a living off of this? I don't know. Like I think that's what we're discovering. There's a way to survive, but like you have to be willing to sacrifice creature comforts and you have to be willing to like struggle. It's the reality that like sh sh sucks sometimes. But, but I don't I don't feel like there's any way to really live without doing some type of writing. 
I always freak out. I've been doing this so long, I, my identity is completely wrapped in it. Sometimes I wonder, like, who I would be without it. But, but I still know the people that I know about music, and that's who I am. It's merged now, it's just one, one object. Definitely not making enough to live as an artist, but I'm just wondering, you know, what, what is the future of that? incident uh, happened in 1965, UFO, alleged UFO, UFO crash that I've been studying for a long time. This is like really intense for me. I've always dreamed about going like to like these UFO hotspots, historic UFO spots, but I've never done it. Yeah, this feels like a uh, place that UFO things would happen. The majority of UFO stuff is just BS. Anybody with common sense knows that, but this is one of the ones where it's really hard to argue that nothing happened out here. It's nice to Roswell. It's really exciting that I'm actually here. It's the bell! Look at it! That's, that's what landed here. There is people from other worlds in that bell. Well, not that particular bell. It's a model, but this is where it happened. This is, this is ground zero. Should we see if the UFO center is open? Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's see that first because it's probably about to close, to close at five. My God! Donnie, what do you think of all this? I just don't even know. Welcome to Kecksburg. Volunteer Fire Department, UFO Festival, July 26th. Okay, to cool, the I'm coming back. Oh, no, they know. Oh my god. This is wild! Oh, I don't know, should we bring an iPhone in there? Breakfast. Yeah, Matt Ulrich and his family hooked us up with a place to stay, and they pointed us to the 
this awesome diner that she just can go. It's apparently Obama's favorite. Motivated, motivated, motivated. Sometimes I'll play some of my older songs, just like, how did I do this before? <laughs> when you get into a, a song, almost like this transcendent moment where it's just like, you just go with it, you know? You can't force that, it just kind of has to happen. So what's it called? Why? It's a marvelous thing. What can it do? Well, it can do almost anything. All oh, without the need for batteries and electricity. Well, no. It can't stop old age or grow your hair back in your ball. No. It won't make your muscles big, your waistline small. I'm afraid it's not a new car, appliance, or TV size wall, but I can guarantee that there are no parts to install. One of the interesting things about Wood Nickel and our philosophy has always been pride ourselves on having a tremendous amount of live entertainment in our stores. On um, an average week, we can have two or three evenings where we have music playing live in the stores, and it tends to bring people out. In Fort Wayne, um, part of the local culture is to have uh, live music, um, a variety, uh, like tonight having poetry and uh, acoustic guitar. A good variety, is it, it really helps make our town uh, unique and uh, we love it. You know how people from Boston are just nice. I mean, we were rated the friendliest city yeah. in America. Northeastern hospitality. It's known all throughout the world. Yeah. You just want to get out of the street. Hey, what the f*** is up, neighbor? Yeah. That's right. Well, there's a <laughs> Wave, smile. Hey, I'm uh, you too. Going through a bunch of facts and figures and sociological opinions, this article makes the grand conclusion that we are pretty kick ass at using technology. I guess like the venue that we're booked at closed down. No, I think I think they're done. Yeah, well, I mean, I hope so. I talked to the guy, you know, he he knew I was on tour, so like I don't know, maybe the least the least he could have done was called me, emailed me. Facebooked me, got in touch with me somehow. This kind of puts a damper on the end of the tour. The tour was supposed to end on the 25th, but now we have nothing left. Yeah, Asheville didn't work out. So it's like Maybe we might as well, I mean, we have a place to stay, but we might as well just drive home. 
So I guess this is the grand conclusion to uh, Green Sundress Tour. It's a weird, it's a weird, it's a weird ending note on this city. I don't know, there's something about this that yeah, I haven't figured out yet. I think I need to haiku about it. I think the tour is ending in Indianapolis. We, we did a, a whole bunch of shows, went like 2,000 miles. So I think the plan is to just hang around in this city. I have a, a good friend that lives here. Tomorrow we're just going to trek out and we're going to go back home and rest for a couple days and then play the return show. Could go back to Asheville and, and hang out for a few days, but we're, we're exhausted. That touring is, is exhausting. It's good and it's bad. You have to really want it to be able to tour. And even this tour was more glamorous than probably a lot of other tours that I'll go on just because I got to stay with family. It really helped me out. There's a lot of people that we were really fortunate in running into. Gave us a push, you know, threw us a couple of bucks or made us food. There's a guy in um, Lafayette last night, the barista, the, uh, he was really cool. He made us dinner and he like threw us a couple of bucks and that was, that was really rad. So, I mean, overall, I think, I think we were really, really lucky on this tour. It's kind of a, quite a cool city to end in, you know. Uh, so yeah, having fun. We'll see you when we get home. I learned a lot from, from the tour about being on the road. It's more work than, than anything else I've ever done in music. But when you're doing it all yourself, if you're independent, um, like us, then it's like, it's a lot of work and you don't really have any time to do anything. Uh, but if you love it, then it's great. If you don't love it, it's not what you want to do with your life, then it's, it's really just kind of a hassle. It's liberating, but it's also very confining. You have a set time you're supposed to be there, and when you're going as far as we are, you've got five hours in between a venue, and your check-in time's at 5.30, and your show the night before went really late. It's hard to make that. There's, there's really no time in between. I wouldn't come away from this trip saying that we messed up, or that we failed, because the point of the tour wasn't to like, come back with any money or, you know, really broad my horizons too much as far as like a fan base or whatever the tour part of the tour was to like see if I could actually do a tour at least for me personally you know, I love being on the road and I I could stay out for longer I, I'm tired but you know I, I could I could keep doing it I stood in my driveway and I screamed for half an hour straight. Then I sat down and I cried. I had spent most of my life up to that point being too embarrassed to be around him and I realized then that I would never have the opportunity to do or say anything different. He suffered from schizophrenia, mental retardation, and he happened to wear Hawaiian shirts all the time. He smoked two packs of cigarettes a day every day because nicotine calmed him down and respiradrin sucks the life out of you. He'd rather have had two personalities than none at all. I used to try hiding the packs in the lilac bushes behind my grandparents' house, but I'd always end up giving them back when you were eight years old and he looks you in the eye to tell you that he needs a cigarette. How do you say no? He used to stand on the front porch and smoke while he'd be running around outside. He'd ask me, who we fucked today, Sawyers? I would say, I don't know, Mark, because I didn't want to...
deal with it, but Mark, I don't know who or what I'm fighting anymore. I call myself a poet, but I feel like the only thing I've done is come up with interesting metaphors for cute girls and redheads. I've never had the guts to say that anytime someone uses the word retarded in a casual conversation, I get the impulse to freak out, but how do you say that without sounding like some self-righteous asshole? How do you explain you spent the better half of your childhood listening to all the kids on the street talking about how stupid your uncle was, and that you heard their parents refer to him to your face as the retard who lives down the block? It is taking me almost 20 years to confidently say that just because someone is mentally ill, it does not mean that they are handicapped. I believe that my uncle was a tourist, and I don't mean that he was constantly lost and couldn't speak the native language. I mean that he found something fresh and unique in everything that we take for granted, that he saw a part of this world that our passports will not let us